Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we've been talking about believing in Jesus and what Jesus said concerning those that believe in him. And this is very important because a lot of times, even as believers, we don't really know what to expect of ourselves. Most times it's all about what God can do for me, what God can do for me. But then what do you expect of yourself as a believer? And that's why I'm sharing these things with you. And remember, like I said, the first thing Jesus said is that we will cast out devils. Now that's what we've been dwelling on for now. Because I want us to have a robust understanding of what this means. And that's why I've been sharing, or it seems I'm dwelling on that for now praise god before going to today's broadcast can we make requests for our daily bread are you ready join me right now and let, let me tell you there's no devil can stop your supply today thank you jesus say father i receive now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god now then Jesus was speaking concerning those who believe in him. Then he says they will cast out devils. Now, yesterday I showed you two instances where devils were cast out. And then and Jesus spoke about what casting out devil by the finger of God. And I said, when you see that happen, that means the kingdom of God has come. Now that's to tell you that one of the signs that you have entered into the kingdom of God and you're operating from there is that you will begin to cast out devils. Now, another instance I want to show you today is from the book of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray that the Lord open your understanding even as we share these things. Acts chapter 16. He said, now it happened as we, from verse 16, Acts chapter 16, from verse 16, praise God. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination. See that now? Now this girl was possessed with a spirit of divination. Now this is how you have different spirits that possesses people. Now, this particular one was possessed with the spirit of divination. Met us who brought her master's much profit for by fortune telling. So, this girl had master, so they were using her to make a business of her fortune telling. Okay. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out. Take note, he said she followed. So, it's not like she was sitting at one place, she followed them. I want you to take note of this because see, this is the area of deception that is so, uh, um, so you, you may not detect easily. Number one, he said the girl followed them. So it's not like they went to meet her where she was. So now they, they went preaching and, and then they were going to pray. And then this girl just comes and, hey, I'll, I'll follow you guys. And if you don't picture the scenario properly, you know, how sometimes you hear, you know, people say, oh, that this girl was, was so strong that she deceived Paul. Now, follow the story carefully. It says, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Imagine you go preach somewhere. And you arrive in that place. And as you're doing your work and someone comes around and say, wow, I love what you guys are doing. In fact, God revealed to me that you guys are, you know, you're, you're the one who will bring us into salvation. Now, the normal thing to say, man, praise God. Oh, God has gone before us. He revealed it to you. Yes. And then as they were going, this girl will be the one telling, announcing. These are the men. Now, look at her statements. Pregebo <laughs> Sabradi. These men are the servants of the Most High God. Were they servants of the Most High? Yes. And then he says, Who proclaim to us 
the way of salvation. Was that the assignment? Yes. So this girl was announcing, more like, I mean, an announcer has gone ahead of us. Praise God. Now, you add, no matter how spiritual you are, there is a slim chance you are going to be able to detect this from the beginning. Now, they didn't know that she was possessed of the demon. When I mean they didn't know, not, not like someone informed them that see that girl, she's possessed of demon. No. Now, even if they told you she's possessed of the demon, and now she comes to you, and this is what she says, there is a likelihood you are going to think that, ah, the moment she saw us, the demon left her, and God's spirit rested upon her, and that's why she's saying what she's saying. But I want you to follow Thank you, Holy Spirit. And she did this, and this she did for many days. Day one, day two, day three, day four. Only God knows how long she did this. But then after a while, just like, you know, how we flow. See, that's why patience, there is no way you will walk with God or walk in the Spirit that you will not learn to inculcate patience in yourself. Because see, patience proves all things. Now in this situation, this lady doing this for many days, it got to a point where Paul, but Paul greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. What happened to Paul? This girl is doing the Lord's work, you know, as they would think. So at what point did Paul realize that this is not normal, this is not right? You see, the consistency now, that's why you must not be so carried away by the praise of men. Now, this was the kind that comes from the praise of men. And now, now I say, but what did she do wrong? You know, some people look at what the girl didn't do anything wrong. In fact, she was helping them. And maybe Paul just, you know, shut down his destiny helper. Maybe God was even using the devil to announce them. No, no. The Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, this girl was the one making money for her masters. And now some new guys have come into town and they definitely, these men are going to turn people's atten attention from her to them. So here, the devil was playing a smart, a very smart game. And what's the game the devil was playing? Here's the game. I'm not going to oppose these people. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to pull back and let them do their thing. But then the devil is already thinking ahead. Because when they finish, they will go. These men are just passing by. They are traveling evangelists. When they finish their work, they will leave town. How do I recapture everyone that they would influence in this with this their new way? Now, this is how Satan was thinking. So what is it? Let me side with it. Remember, she was always already functioning by the spirit of divination. So people pay money to go to her, right? To, to tell them the things that will happen, okay? And of course, they would have run out, out of town if there was no percent of accuracy in what she was doing. You know what I mean? But being accurate doesn't mean it's the will of God. See that now? So, here was the plan. Don't fight them. Act like you're siding with them. In fact, go ahead of them. So, at the end of the day, when they do their work or they start doing their work and people see that truly these men came to show us the way of salvation. Now we have seen the way of salvation. Who told us that these men were going to show us the salvation? That girl. Oh, ah, that girl truly, she's very accurate. She prophesied about this man. And this man came and did exactly what she said. She must be very powerful. Do you see the picture now? 
Now, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. And that's why I say you must be careful with the praise of men. Now, especially ministers, especially you businessmen when you're becoming successful. There are, there are demons that hide in this realm that you may not detect easily. When you start prospering, they will come around you and they will be the ones hailing you. Ah, come on. I mean, not, you can't do anything wrong. Just go on, go on, go on. You think that God is sending you helpers. You don't realize that they are already plotting your downfall in the future or how to useless your work in the future. And some have attached. Now, imagine Paul not knowing and carrying this lady. How did you know that the Spirit of God told me, say, oh, come, come and join us. You'll become a, the prophetess in amongst us. Imagine that. Many have done so. And they now have in the church people who operate by the spirit of divination. Now, these are demons they were supposed to cast out, but because they didn't know, they were not sensitive enough. Paul, at the beginning, it looked okay. But see, in the, the con now, now, you see, Jesus said, by their fruit, you will know them. So someone is prophesying and he's so accurate. Wow, wonderful. Jesus don't say, don't look at their prophecy. Jesus didn't say, don't look at the way they are. Jesus said, look at the fruit. It's the fruit you should look at. I believe, because she did this for many days. I believe Paul was looking for fruit. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Oh. Just that uh, the last time I slept with a man, you know, like, uh, what do you mean? And then, you see, it's so easy to begin to tell, no, you can't be functioning by the Spirit of God and be living like that. No. And there are certain truths you must know about the Holy Spirit. There is no compromise in this matter, brothers and sisters. There is no compromise. It's either one has the Spirit of God or does not have the Spirit of God. Someone may look like he has the Spirit of God, but brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God has fruits. If he is there, he will produce fruits. If you think he is there, yet you don't see the fruit, don't try to explain it. He is not there. And that's how people get into compromise. Well, guess what? It is your life he's after. <laughs> he's after your life. So you see, I showed you yesterday about the ones who come out to oppose you. Now, that bad Jesus guy, he came out to oppose them. Now, he, he was stopping the man they were preaching to from receiving the gospel. Now, this particular one we're dealing with today is the one that comes with so much tricks. He comes like he's like you. He comes like he's on your side. Now, not just ministers, like I said, business people whatever you do the moment you begin to make that the moment you begin to rise in success these demons come for you oh they will talk good about you they will do evangelism for you but now you see someone working with so much zeal but then look for fruits when you don't see fruits then you know you're dealing with a demonic spirit yeah if someone is functioning on this high level of, in quotes, anointing, and you don't see fruit, you see, because the higher you go in the anointing, the more you bear fruit. What did Jesus say? I ordain you so that you'll bear much fruit. See that now? Much fruit. And the Bible is clear about the fruit. So you find out that there is no fruit. Now when I say there is no fruit, you look at it. There is no fruit. Now we're going to talk about the fruit later on in this, this month. In the, in the, in, you know, as we continue this. So I believe that's what Paul, because her accuracy on this other side looks perfect. But then she did this for many days. 
So it's enough. Now, if you're, if you're a careful minister, you won't just get dazzled with, with the act on the pulpit. You won't just get dazzled with the way um, one ministers or one um, functions in the, in quotes, anointing. You, you'll be concerned how this person lives his life. You'll be concerned how this person talks. You'll be concerned. You know, you, you see someone finish prophesying so accurately and functioning under the Spirit of God. And then the next thing, you, you after the service, you guys sit down together and you hear the foul words that are coming out of the person's mouth. Right? Huh? Is this the same person? Say, ah, I didn't know you can talk like that. Ah, I don't know. You don't know. Ah, you don't know me then. You don't know me then. Really? Brothers and sisters, look for fruits. If you don't see the fruit, don't look at how accurate this person is. You'll be deceiving yourself. Now, you know, sometimes I've heard people say, oh no, God told Moses, or rather Moses told the people, that if a, if a, if a prophet of God, if someone comes and says he's a prophet, and he declares a thing, and that thing does not come to pass, he said, don't fear him, he's not real. And that's not, that's not the, the, accurate way to know who a true prophet is. And remember, Jesus came and simply told us the truth. By their fruit, you will know them. So stick with what Jesus said. Brothers and sisters, look for fruit. If you don't see fruit and you see high the level of anointing, in quotes, you're dealing with a demonic spirit. You may not like this, but this is the truth. That's what Paul saw in this case. That's why I brought this case to you. That was what was happening in this case. Powerful anointing, <laughs> prophesying, anointed um, zeal. There was zeal in this lady because she was the one announcing. She pulled crowds to them. Remember, she was already popular. She pulled crowds to them. You remember also the case of the um, Simon. When, when Philip went to preach, I think that's Philip that went to preach. And then this guy named Simon, he, was, he used to be, he, he, he practiced divination and a sorcerer also. And then he was regarded in, that was in Samaria, right? He was regarded as one with the... With, in fact, he, he, he was too anointed that everybody reverenced him. And when Philip got there, this guy, the Bible said this guy became Philip's shadow. He, he, he was... He, he, he claimed to have gotten saved. So he was following him everywhere. Now, then they now sent for Peter and John. And Peter and John came over and to minister the Holy Ghost to them. And they ministered. Then this guy noticed that anyone Peter and John laid hands on, the person received the Holy Ghost. So he went to them with money. He said, please give me this gift so that anyone I lay hands on will receive the Holy Ghost. In today's world, you call it, he brought a seed to sow. Now, when he did that, Peter responded. Oh, you see Peter's response. I think I'll read that to you tomorrow, praise God, because of time. But brothers and sisters, hear me. There is no authority. You know, sometimes people are scared. God's children are scared. They say, ah, I don't want to see that. That's the deity. That's the priest of the deity in my, in my village. He's so powerful. Everybody fears him. Philip came into town as a nobody. Peter, um, Paul and Silas came into town as nobody. They didn't know them. They just came in. They were not, their names were not popular like you think they are now. They came into town, but they came with purpose and focus in their hearts. And because the Lord was with them, it was so easy for every demonic spirit to recognize them. So they recognize you also. Because you are anointed. They do. And they begin to plot you. Bro, listen, if you don't, that's, you see, what I'm sharing with you, if you don't pay attention to it, they will slow you down. 
when Paul realized that, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, this is not the spirit of God, he turns to her and says, I command you, come out of her. And the spirit came out that very hour. And that's exactly what, hap what will happen when you cast out devils in the name of Jesus because his authority were functioning. They will come out that same hour in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you today with sight. I bless you today with boldness. That the Spirit of God will anoint you with his boldness to face life and conquer in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.